Good morning everyone, time for another silver update. Apologize about my voice, I've caught a bug, so bear with me on that. This is the 10 minute chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. We've got kind of an interesting formation here. Silver is not going to be the main story at all, but I did note a falling trend line that we may be penetrating when we get around the 8.30 hour, possibly 9.30 when the Wall Street markets open. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. The big story though, as far as the charts go, is going to be the crude oil chart. And I posted that on my blog. We're rising now and this is a very important chart when we get out to the daily. As you can see, we've got a falling sort of pennant formation here. And you can see this is a very, very old pennant that we're looking at. I suppose you could draw it here or here, it doesn't really matter, and then draw it up from here. So this is a very long-standing formation, and it appears that we're breaking above it. We would expect to see a rapid move to 110 if we significantly get through this. And then, of course, we have overhead resistance here at 115, which gives us kind of free sailing all the way back up to the 145 or so high. 148 or something like that. So this is a very important formation that's happening here. Is it portending war in the Middle East? The saber rattling has been very serious over the weekend. We have the senators stepping up talking about getting very serious about the Iranian nuclear program, but we also have Iran cutting off European nations from their oil supply even before the embargoes take place so things definitely seem to be heating up the other chart we want to look at one of the other charts is going to be the euro US dollar we have real really some surprising strength this morning and we'll talk about that when we get to the action with the ECB over the weekend the other chart of course that we've been following fairly closely is the dollar yen and you can see we touched the 80 point or just right next to the 80 point which when we go back to historical levels that's not as large a move as we had when we had this Fukushima intervention but we've now surpa surpassed in size these past moves or we're very close to surpassing these past central bank interventions so we continue to have dollar strength against the yen. What that portends, I can't say either. I want to jump over to the main story of the day, and that's going to be the ECB and what came out over the weekend. This is an article from Zero Hedge. I'm going to read this. It's not very long. It's by Mark Grant, out of the box, onto Wall Street. It's just really important that we look at what the ECB has done here. He says... I'm not going to speculate about anything this morning. No guesses about what the finance ministers might do on Monday. No simple addition or subtraction that the data used to forecast Greece's return to 120% debt to GDP ratio is a falsification of the numbers. No mention that only 19 cents of any bailout for Greece would actually go to the country. I'm not going to discuss anything except what the European Central Bank has actually done and what we now know with 100% certainty and the horrifying implications of their actions. The ECB on its own and without judicial or parliamentary review has swapped their Greek debt for new Greek debt that is not subject to any collective action clause. They did this unilaterally and without the consent of any other sovereign debt bond owners of Greek debt. They did this without the objection of any nation in Europe. They have retroactively changed the indenture, the contract made by Greece with all the buyers of their bonds, when the debt was issued. There is no speculation involved in these statements. There is no longer any guesswork on what might be. The ECB swapped their bonds for new Greek bonds, with the assent of the Greek government and is now a done deal. Having then done this, the implications must now be considered utilizing the clear light of unadulterated reason. The issue now is no longer a one-off Greek issue, but a full-on ECB issue. 
we know now that the ECB can retroactively change the rules, change an indenture, so that if the ECB can do this with Greece, then it can certainly do it with any sovereign debt in Europe. If they can exempt themselves from a collective action clause, then they can exempt themselves from any clause in any sovereign indenture for any European country. The fact that they are now clearly senior to other bondholders, or more aptly put, that any private bond owner is now subordinated to the ECB, is one consideration, but hardly the most important one. The incredibly grim reality now is that any European and all European sovereign debt can have their indentures changed by the ECB when it is to their advantage. It is the collective action clause today, but tomorrow it could be the maturity or the coupon or any other terms and conditions in an indenture. It is Greece today, but tomorrow it could be France or Portugal or Italy. The rule of law has been abrogated and tossed aside in the name of political contrivance. And I'll link this article. You can read, continue to finish this article. This uh, issue is actually something that I brought up about in regards to the uh, the overriding of the rights of the bondholders in the case of the GM bonds when GM was going through bankruptcy and rather than taking the assets and selling them off and breaking up the company and paying off the senior bondholders first which is the hundreds of years of contract law would require that they actually abrogated that and stiffed the senior bondholders and gave the company to the unions so this this has occurred in America as well this abrogation of the rule of law and in America it's already happened with private debt instruments now it's happening in Europe with public debt instruments so it's very clear here that this is just one more indication that not only do you have no guarantee when you're holding a piece of paper you have the counterparty risk of the piece of paper that you're holding and of course that should be calculated into the interest rate in the free market but again that's often corrupted because of the rating agencies but now you have another risk and that's the risk that a government in between might interfere with the legal process and prevent you from being able to exercise your legal claims so that's a big one we're gonna see what that does to the European markets for sovereign debt I think it's gonna have a big impact and last I wanted to take you over to eBay and just do a little study here of the some of these semi or quasi numismatic coins that I've been following the first one here I've got is the Somali elephant and you can see the ones that have sold here the top ones are the 2012s if we scroll down we can see there's a couple 2011s here on the bottom now what's interesting here is that the 2011 you see we have fifty six dollars while these 2012s are going roughly 40 to 45 but we get down to the 2011 we get 56 our next 2011 is going to be there's not many of them that's the first thing to know we're at fifty dollars there and let's do one more just to compare here's another 2011 well that one didn't sell and that's a colorized one so we don't want to use that one here's one here for forty nine dollars so we're looking at basically a five dollar premium that's built into the old one year older elephant which is that's not excellent but that's good to see that premium building at forty five dollars 2012 has actually got a premium of its own so we're looking at premiums from five to fifteen dollars so very healthy that's the type of thing you want to see on that coin I want to look over at some of the wildlife series and check and see how the premiums are building on those. We'll go first to the silver grizzly and looks like we're getting a lot of other coins in here. So here's one. That's that seems like an outlier there. Oh that is that two? Okay, so that's two. So we're looking at about forty five dollars. Here's one for forty nine dollars. 
and here's one they got for 38 plus 2 so around 40 dollars so the Grizzly does not yet seem to have much of a premium built into it here's 42 dollars I still expect that this will have a premium built into it but it really hasn't yet so we're talking 35 to 40 dollars I would say if you can get this coin for $38 or less, maybe around there, you definitely, that would be a good buy. So let's look at the Moose. That's the newest one, and I seriously doubt whether there'll be any premium built into this one because it's available widely. And maybe I'm wrong. Here's a $47 one. Here's $40. Here's another $40. So another 40 42 so this one seems to be strong right out of the gate and that's very encouraging for people who've been deciding to stack that one and the next one we want to do the timber wolf but there's two years i think there was a 2006 so we want to throw in the 2011 date there and this is the one that's really jumped out i can't really say why but it definitely has jumped out you can see it's about 58 there we've got another one for 60 we've got another one for 58 62 so this one's hovering at about 60 uh, it has been expensive of late but of course when it first was issued you could get it for the three dollars or so above spot so this this one has really been an outperformer and uh, I don't think you can get this coin. If you can get this coin, obviously you want to pick it up for anything, you know, below $40. I seriously doubt if you can get this coin. But so that's going to be the top winner of the Wildlife Series. And let's just check the Cougar because we haven't checked that one. That's the one that has, hasn't been that popular. And we'll just see how that one's performed. and it hasn't performed as well although it's hovering at about 40 so that's not bad these these shipping are high so we want to find someone from a different a different person selling this coin here's another one that went for 46 so there's a 47 so this one is actually stronger than I would have expected it appears that the grizzly is actually one of the weakest ones and that's not what I would have expected Definitely the Timber Wolf is the strongest, so congratulations to those of you who picked that coin up. So back to the chart, we're watching the oil chart very closely this morning because it does seem to be portending something very serious going on, perhaps war in the Middle East coming very soon. The silver chart and the gold chart have kind of been in the doldrums of late so they've been very boring just a good time to stack and then of course we want to watch what's happening over in Europe with this latest uh, trick that the ECB has pulled and I think that's just going to be one more nail in the coffin for paper instruments and that's just one more positive for stacking silver and we'll talk to you next time